dear students in this chapter chemical bonding and molecular structure we will study about the various types of bonding and the shapes of the molecular structures but before starting the bonding and the lewis dot structure let me tell you that matter is made up of one or the different types of elements and elements are made up of atoms and molecules but atoms are incapable of independent existence except the noble gases otherwise all other atoms all other elements they exist in the molecular state now why these noble gases are capable of independent existence whereas the other atoms cannot do so the reason behind is the noble gases have their eight electrons in their valence shell and all other elements they do not have eight electrons in the valence shell so these atoms combine to enter into more stable state there are many theories given regarding the bonding of the atoms for example the valence bond theory the molecular orbital theory valence shell electron pair repulsion theory and the cosel lewis approach normally there are two types of bonds the ionic or the electrovalent bond and a covalent bond ionic bond and covalent bond we will discuss now ionic bond ionic bond is formed by the complete transference of one or the more electrons from one atom to another and this process is called electrovalency and the chemical bond formed is termed as the ionic bond or the electrovalent bond by sharing of electrons a covalent bond is formed a covalent bond when one to one electron is shared then it is a normal covalent bond but in a special type of sharing when both the electrons are contributed by one atom it is a coordinate bond a special type of covalent bond so let's have an overview of the two types of bonds there are two bond types ionic and covalent in ionic bonding one atom has stronger attraction for electrons than the other and it steals an electron from a second atom in covalent bonding the attraction for the electrons is similar for the two atoms they share their electrons to obtain an octet cosel and lewis studied the nature of the noble gases and they come to the conclusion that noble gases do not undergo the chemical combination because of their complete octet and they also inferred that only the valence electrons they play role in the formation of the chemical bonding the inner electrons do not participate in the chemical bonding so while representing a chemical bond that is an ionic or a covalent bond lewis gave a lewis dot formula or he gave the lewis symbols in which he represented the valence electrons through dots and that is why they are known as the lewis dot structures or the lewis dot symbols the first group element have only one electron in their valence shell and that will participate in the chemical bonding so we will write the symbol of the element and put one dot one dot means one electron similarly the second group has the two valence electrons so again we will write the symbol of the element for example beryllium and we will show two dots the two dots will represent the two electrons in the same way for example in the case of oxygen the atomic number of oxygen is 8 so in its valence shell it has six electrons so we will put six dots around an oxygen symbol this is a very simple method to show the valence electrons and it make it very simpler to show the chemical bonding through these lewis dot structures neon neon is a noble gas it has eight electrons in the outermost shell 
from the picture also you can see the eight dots around the symbol of the neon element rubidium only one electron is shown that is via one dot around the fluorine there are seven dot means there are seven valence electrons and only these electrons will participate in the bond formation it may be a ionic bond or a covalent bond now i'll tell you how to write the lewis dot structure in a case of a chemical compound first of all what we do is we total the number of the valence electrons for example in the case of the carbon monoxide that is co the carbon has four valence electrons and oxygen has six valence electrons so 4 plus 6 equals to 10 valence electrons now we intelligently guess the structure of the carbon monoxide molecule then we will write the symbol of carbon and oxygen and then distribute the 10 electrons around these elements as per the rules the lesser electronegative element comes in the center and the more electronegative elements surrounds the lesser electronegative elements when we show the electrons first of all we make the single bond that is a single bond is formed by the sharing of the two electrons and if the electrons are left even after the formation of the single bond we make the double bond or we show the leftover electrons through the lone pair of electrons let me revise through these counting the total electrons once we have determined the basic structure of the molecule we can start placing electrons around atoms the first step is to determine the total number of electrons that are available we use the group number of the element to indicate the number of the valence electrons that it contributes to the molecule example oxygen in group 6a contributes 6 electrons once we have determined the number of the total valence electrons we can start distributing them throughout the molecule when we represent electrons they will be in pairs since an orbital holds two electrons electron pairs can be represented with two dots or a solid line ionic bonding now we, i will explain ionic bond through a lewis dot structure that how we can represent an ionic bond via lewis dot symbols for example ionic bond in sodium chloride sodium has one electron extra that is more than an inner octet so it tends to lose this one outer electron to the chlorine which has seven electrons in the valence shell both do this to have eight electron in their octet sodium loses one electron and changes into sodium cation that is with one positive charge whereas chlorine gains one electron and completes its octet and changes into chloride ion now let me show you this through an electron dot symbol the transfer of electron you can very well see from the sodium to chlorine and entering of them into the more stable state and since they are now oppositely charged ions electrostatic force will hold them you can see the electron dot structure now the chlorine is surrounded by eight dots eight dots means eight electrons around it and now also you can see a negative charge on the chloride ion because it has gained one electron from the sodium ion and sodium has one positive charge now i am taking another example of lithium chloride lithium an alkali metal again it has one electron in the valence shell and the chlorine it has seven electrons in its valence shell the one valence electron of the lithium will be transferred to the chlorine and chlorine will change into chloride ion and lithium will change into lithium plus cation 
one electron is transferred from the lithium to the valence shell of chlorine. Now, lithium has two electrons in its valence shell and chloride ion has eight electrons in the valence shell. After the octet, the duplet state is stable. So, lithium completes its duplet because it cannot complete its octet. Now, let us see the electron dot structure of lithium chloride that lithium has one electron in the valence shell which is transferred to the chlorine atom. Chlorine has seven electrons, the seven dots you can very well see. Now, you can understand how we can represent the electron dot structure and the ionic bond. Let me take another example of methane to show the electron dot structure. Carbon, it has four electrons in the valence shell and hydrogen has one electron each. Now, they will form a covalent bond, a bond which is formed by the sharing of electron. The red dots, they are representing the single electron of the hydrogen and the black dots, they are the four electrons of the carbon. Now, you can see that by the sharing of these electrons, the duplet of the hydrogen is complete and the octet of the carbon is complete. Both are in the stable state and electrons are represented by the red and the green dots. Lewis dot structure is a very simple and very convenient method to show the sharing of electrons. This is an example of ammonia. In ammonia also, nitrogen will complete its octet and hydrogen will complete its duplet. Now, the octet rule. From last so many examples, it is very much clear that to complete the octet is the most stable state. The noble gases have their octet complete and all other elements, they enter into this most stable state. So, octet rule states that the atoms of the different elements combine with each other in order to complete their respective octets. That is, eight electrons in their outermost shell or duplet that is having two electrons in the outermost shell to attain stable nearest noble gas configuration. Dear children, but there are limitations to the octet rule. There are many elements which cannot complete their octet. There are many elements which have electrons more than eight in the valence shell that is known as expanded octet and there are elements which have odd number of electrons. Let me give you quick examples of these three exceptions to the octet rule. The incomplete octet of the central atom, the number of electrons surrounding the central atom is less than 8. This is specially the case with elements having less than 4 valence electrons. Most common examples are the compounds of lithium, beryllium and boron. In these, the central atom, they do not complete their octet, they complete their duplet. This is the first exception to octet rule. Odd electron molecules. Nitric oxide has odd number of electrons. Similarly, nitrogen dioxide, the octet rule is not satisfied for all the atoms. The expanded octet. Expanded octet means the number of electrons in the valence shell is more than 8. For example, in PCL5, in PCL5, phosphorus is in the center and instead of 8, it is surrounded by 10 valence electrons. Let me show you through the atomic model set. This is PCL5. Here, the black atom is representing phosphorus. It is surrounded by five chlorine atoms. Now, you can see these single bonds. The shape is trigonal bipyramidal. Here, these five bonds means the ten pair of electrons which are surrounding this phosphorus atom. One bond means two electrons. 
in total there are 5 bonds 2 into 5 means 10 electrons are surrounding the phosphorus octet rule says that there must be 8 electrons around the central atom but in pcl5 there are 10 electrons around the central atom let me take one more example of sf6 this is sf6 that is sulfur hexafluoride here the black ball is representing the sulfur atom it is surrounded by six fluorine atoms and these are six covalent bonds six covalent bond means 12 electrons are surrounding the sulfur atom again this is an exception to octet rule let's see the electron dot structures of all these exceptions pf5 this is phosphorus pentafluoride phosphorus is in the center surrounded by five fluorine atoms now you can see the five covalent bonds around the phosphorus so you can very well count the number of electrons around phosphorus it will be 10 in number other drawbacks of the octet theory are this theory does not account for the shape of the molecules it does not explain the relative stability of the molecules being totally silent about the energy of a molecule dear children let me give you a quick recap of this topic we studied that why do these elements combine and how do they combine we also studied the lewis dot structure lewis gave a very convenient very easy method to represent the valence electrons by making dots by showing the dots we can very well see the ionic bond formation and the covalent bonds we also studied about the octet rule and its exceptions there are many elements who complete their octet but there are few who have either less than 8 electrons around them or more than 8 electrons around them i'm sure all these concepts are clear to you Thank you.